All right, guys, so welcome to another video for the Redmi K20 Pro. And as you can see on the screen, we're going to talk about Pixel OS, which is based on Android 12.1, also known as Android L. I've been using it since this afternoon. This is going to be a quick review. So before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything. And it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to PhoneOps. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. Right, so let's see what we have here. We have Pixel OS Unofficial 12 OSS and this is Android 12.1 or Android 12 L. I've had very little hands-on experience on this particular version of Android, but I've heard really, really good things about it that it is smoother compared to the previous Android 12 version and stuff like that. Now, we will definitely not get into the source changelog thing, but we will definitely look at device changelog to see what all changes are done. Now, remember, we are talking about an unofficial version of Pixel OS. So this is the update for 2nd of April 2022. It comes with an updated Soviet kernel, updated graphics blobs from this particular release and games and UI performance has been improved. Now, apart from this, it does say that you need to use one of these three recoveries, otherwise you will have issues or you may be stuck in fast boot. Android 11 firmware is recommended, read this. If you don't flash the ROM from the recoveries above, you will end up in fast boot. So only use one of the recoveries shared in this post. Now, the ROM is based on OSS vendor and Soviet kernel. Now, let's go to the main screen. Now, I did miss flashing ROMs for 10 to 15 days. And since then, Android L came out and a lot of things changed. Not really visual changes per se, but there are a lot of under the hood changes which have made the experience on AOSP ROMs much more better. And Soviet kernel has been getting updated. Kudos to the developers of Soviet kernel because it is giving really, really decent performance. Now, I'll tell you this from the last two days when I've been flashing ROMs and trying all sorts of things on these three devices, this has come very close to this, you know, uh, this is a 855, this is a 860. So the performance on the K20 Pro is really, really improved on the latest custom ROMs. So let's go ahead and clear all the notifications from here. And right off the bat, you will see that you not only have the complete Android 12 user interface with Monet doing a great job, but you also have these privacy indicators coming up that mic is being used, camera is being used, location is being used. That's definitely Android 12 features. It is present and it is working absolutely fine. Now, the moment you swipe to the left from the home screen you will see that you have this google feed which is butter smooth you know i i sometimes wonder that with custom rom quality like this if this device would have had a 90 hertz display it would have made a world of a difference because the 855 is very capable of running games at 80 85 fps and these custom roms are enabling this particular device to do wonders and the scrolling experience in google feed is just splendid even when scrolling if you move to the home screen the animation is pretty great now if you press on any icons over here, you will see that the app icon animations are there. They are working absolutely fine. There is no stutter, no jitter. This whole cohesive experience is what adds up to a brilliant, brilliant user interface. Now, apart from this, you do have screen recording as always, which allows you to record internal and external audio. You do have extra dim, DC dimming, high brightness mode. All those features are pretty common these days. And if you see over here, you have some more options available as well, but not a ton of options are available. Now, if you press and hold over here, you will see that you now get the new style of wallpaper and styles, basically Android L in all its glory. Then you have the widgets. As you can see, widgets look almost the same as they used to look earlier. Now, apart from this, if you go to home settings, you will see that this is your pixel launcher and it is working smooth as butter. Now you have the power menu shortcut over here and the sweet little animation is really, really amazing. Now moving on, if you actually go to about and you click on the Android version, that is Android version 12, you will see that this is a March security update, Soviet star kernel, and this is one of the latest builds of Pixel OS unofficial. Now, the good thing here is, although this particular ROM is unofficial, but the experience is definitely, definitely there. You can definitely go ahead and use it as a daily driver. You have a ton of things that are working absolutely fine. I've tried surfing the internet on mobile data, on Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, all working fine. 
Wi-Fi calling working fine. Something that I was not able to test was carrier video calling. Maybe one of y'all can test that for me and let me know in the comment section. Now, apart from this, this animation that you see over here is very subtle and smooth as well, and it works absolutely fine. Now, when you talk about the apps included with this particular ROM, this is a very, very light ROM. It doesn't really come with any bloatware. You have a very, very basic camera application, as you can see over here, and it works just fine. Maybe you can flash Gcam or ANX, whatever works for you, and you should have a decent experience. Now, you do see that I do have some benchmark applications, some gaming applications. So I have been putting this ROM through its paces, and it has been giving me a pretty, pretty decent experience. So let's go to the settings menu and talk about a few things. Now, network and internet, connected devices, apps, all these features are available. And over here, you do have the Android 12 gaming dashboard as well. You have screen time over here. You have your Google Assistant special app access. Now, if you go to the battery section, you will actually see that we've used the screen. Let's go ahead and see the complete usage over here. About 18 hours and four minutes left is what it is saying. And let's see here, am I doing anything wrong? Not really. So let's go to battery usage. Google Play Store, one hour and 29 minutes. I've ran benchmarks. Basically I've had close to an hour of screen on time and still we have around 79% battery. Apart from this, you do have adaptive preferences available over here. You have the battery percentage option available as well. If you go to notifications, you can go ahead and enable the notification history toggle. Right now, moving on, you have sound and vibration in which you do have a ton of options, including MI sound enhancer. If you go to display, you will have things like ambient display, which does include your always on display and it works absolutely fine. Pick up, hand wave, pocket, wake up, all these features are available and they work absolutely fine. You have DC dimming, you have high brightness mode, which are doing a pretty, pretty rock solid job here. If you go to wallpaper and style, you will see that you have themed icons beta still available. You can actually go ahead and select a wallpaper from curated culture and you will notice that it will first download the wallpaper and then it allows you to apply that particular wallpaper. So let's go ahead and apply one of the wallpapers that we intend to use. So let's select this one and immediately Monet UI coming into action and these colors just look amazing, don't they, right? So, you know, wallpaper and styles is doing a pretty rock solid job there, including security. Now, you not only have everything available, including face unlock and fingerprint unlock, these features are available and they work absolutely fine as well. Let's go ahead and lock the screen over here. Okay, now let's see here. Right. So I was using it from the wrong angle probably. As Apple says it, you're holding it wrong. So yes, fingerprint has been working absolutely okay for me. When I'm putting the phone flat on the table, it's probably an awkward angle for me to press my finger. That's the reason this was happening, but otherwise it has been working absolutely fine. If you go to system, you have pop-up camera settings, which gives you options like camera LED, front camera raise dialogue, pop-up camera sound effects and calibration as well. Good to see that calibration is present. And apart from this, you have developer options and system updates. Now I'm not really sure if system update is working or not, but from the looks of it, it's not really working. Apart from this, the charging speed with a 27 watt charger has been absolutely okay. No problem there whatsoever. Safety net works absolutely fine. DRM info, that means your Netflix, Amazon Prime HD should be working absolutely okay. All said and done, what about the performance numbers? Now, whenever you talk about Soviet Star and the Redmi K20 Pro, performance is going to be a talk of the town and that's what it does pretty, pretty well. Now, let's look at the CPU throttle test first for which we will go to Google Photos. As you can see, the CPU throttled to 93% of its max performance and the average score was 184.953 GIPS with a max of 193.062 GIPS. This is excellent performance. Not only this, let's actually go ahead and check if we get unlimited storage. Yes, we are getting unlimited storage. Now let's go ahead and talk about N2 to benchmark over here. Now we are nearing almost, you know, 575, 367. This is 
almost what this particular device scores on stock ROM. So this is rock solid performance. You're getting the performance of a Snapdragon 860 on an 855 with a custom ROM. Let's actually go to Geekbench and let's see what the single core and multi-core scores have to say. So if you actually go to the history section over here, 760 single core, 2784 multi-core. So splendid benchmark numbers, amazing smoothness, very good look of the UI, a complete Android 12.1 you know, feature list which is available and works absolutely okay. I've not had any major hiccups in the last eight to 10 hours that I've been using this ROM. All in all, Pixel OS, even though it has an unofficial tag, it has a lot of things going for it. You should definitely give it a try and you can definitely use it as a daily driver. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about this video? Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling, take care, goodbye.